The next topic in decision trees is expected value of sample information, EVSI, and the expected value of perfect information, EVPI. First, let's see what, what they mean, the concept, and then uh, we will see how we can calculate them. So let's go back to this example that we already studied. Um, so here we had two options, two main options, don't test market it and the other option was test market it and depending on what the results or the test market are, then we could market it naturally or not. EVSI, expected value of sample information, is basically how much is the value, the worth of this test marketing. It, it wants to tell us, uh, for example, if a company is doing the local uh, marketing for us we want to see how much is that information that they're going to give us worth how much is it worth um, whereas um, in expected value of perfect information we want to see if someone knew exactly what's going to happen uh, how much would that cost therefore the, va the value of test market cannot go higher than that so basically that EVPI is an upper bound for EVSI all right, but well let's do, let's dive deeper into EVSI first. So expected value of sample information, EVSI. Uh, we want to see what is the value of the information that would be obtained by test marketing Chocola, that product. And we are going to assume that the company is risk neutral at this point. Um, so three steps. First, determine Coloco, the company's expected final asset position uh, the value that we would get by backward method on the tree um, for the first node. If the company acts optimally, which means we still do the backward method, and the test market study is costless. So this time I'm going to look at this tree and I will not deduct uh, 30,000 for test marketing uh, at the terminal branches. I'm going to uh, drop this. Okay and then do the backward method and calculate a value. That value is called expected value with sample information. EVWSI, which is different from EVSI. So EWSI would be the maximum of uh, this branch that I already calculated, this one, plus 30,000 because I am uh, deducting 30,000 from all of these terminal branches. So if I if I drop it, it's as if I add back 30,000 to 264, which gives me 294. The maximum of 294, and so the final decision was between these two nodes, right? So I add back the 30,000, this becomes 294, and this remains 270. So the maximum of this is 294. That 294 is called EVWSI. Next. I want to determine the largest expected final asset position that Coloco would obtain if the test market study were not available. So this time I'm going to look at this tree and just ignore all of this test market that you see up here. So I'm going to ignore all of that. So my tree would be just um, this part. So if this were my tree, then my expected value would be um, this value which is 270 we call that uh, original information which is EVWOI um, so we calculate that and then the difference between EVWSI and EVWOI uh, is EVSI 24,000 so this basically means that uh, 24,000 is the most that Coloco can pay for the test market information and still be at least as well off as without the test market information so basically uh, this is how much this test market the upper branch this effort uh, is worth how about uh, EVPI EVWPI minus so this part of it is the same as EVSI expected value of original information which is only this highlighted part so here you want to create a new tree that starts with an event and th these events are the the main states of the world national success national failure with the same probabilities so I had the same probabilities here 55 45 percent so I keep those there and then 
I make the decision to market it nationally or not. Of course, if I know and if I market it nationally and if it's a national success, I'm going to make 450,000. And if I know that it's national success and I don't market it, um, I keep my money, the original asset position, 150,000. Um, if I know that it's a national failure and I still market it, my asset position is going to drop to 50,000. And if I don't, I'm going to keep my uh, 150,000 asset position. So if I had this tree and I wanted to use the backward method, of course, between two, two values, this is larger here, this is larger. And then I get the expected value of these and I call that expected value of expected value with perfect information. <clears throat> um, and then I deduct EVWOI and I get 45,000. That's the calculation. But what does it mean? It means that um, 45,000 is the maximum we would pay for a test market for the most accurate for test market that gives us the perfect information tells us what's going to happen even that is not worth more than 45,000 in other terms EVPI is an upper bound for the sample information and uh, yeah in no test market is going to be worth more than 45,000 so let me dive a little deeper into EVWPI to see what the concept is it basically means uh, this 315,000 it means I am going to make the best decision for example uh, I don't have any control over over Chocola's success Chocola either is gonna be successful or not right uh, regardless of what's what happens we still have the probability of success and failure for national marketing okay but what I'm going to do here is I want to make the best, best decision. If Chocola is going to be a national success, I'm going to test, I'm going to market it nationally. And if it's going to be a national failure, I'm not going to. When does that happen? When I have the perfect, perfect information, when I know exactly what's going to happen. All right. If that happens, so there is a 55, if I, if I uh, know what's going to happen and I act accordingly, there is a 55% chance that I actually uh, make the profit and there is a 45% chance that I don't participate or I don't do this national marketing because I know it's going to be a failure. So I will not lose anything. So it's basically the expected value of not losing anything and winning, making the best decision. And... Uh, which is 315,000. That's the expected value of perfect information. Expected value with perfect, perfect information. Uh, if I knew everything. And what I have now, what I can do is expected value with original information. So this is all test, right? But what, what's in front of me right now without any prediction is that I just know that there is a 55% chance of winning, 45% chance of losing. We are choosing to do this. And that has an expected value of 270,000. Uh, therefore, the best prediction can uh, increase my expected value to 315. But without any prediction, I already have an expected value of 200, uh, 270,000. The difference between those is the expected value of perfect information. So if someone comes to me and says, uh, I'm going to run a test market for you that gives you a really good prediction about what's going to happen, but it's cost 50,000. I'm not going to do that because uh, even if they are 100% accurate about what's going to happen, it's not worth more than 45,000.